Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and welcome to another Tuesday night where I'm talking to you about all things um, elements of music or concepts of music as I am discussing at the moment um, this week, sorry, this month and next month, um, discussing more about the tone, like, sorry, the concepts of music because um, that's what I actually teach and I've been creating a whole stack of new resources because I personally need them. So it's always a bonus for you guys. So as I said, we're going to be talking about tone color tonight, and um, I'm going to show you a new product again, something that I've had for a while um, in lots of different places, but not in one spot. So it's now all together in one spot specifically for grades nine and 10 music students. You could use it for younger kids. You could use it for older kids. It depends on um, obviously your students, but that's where mine is uh, I've got it pitched towards. So I'm going to show you the actual product. I'll show you um, where it is um, in my store first when I find the actual, don't you love it when you can't find it? Hang on, I can't see that at all. So let me just do this. And it might be because I had that hiding. Alrighty, I will try again. Here we go, there it is. You beauty. Alrighty, so this is, as I said, the new product, um, Concepts of Music, um, or Concepts in Music, um, Tone Colour. So I said I talk about the six concepts in music um, in my state where I teach, and this is um, one of the resources that I've created. So I'm literally... I created this and the dynamics one because they're the first two concepts I will be talking about this year with my grades nine and 10 kids. And um, I thought, well, you know, it, it, nothing better than to actually get me um, moving is to actually um, create it for you guys as well. So you can see here, as it's the concepts of music, um, there is a sale on TPT at the moment. So if you want to grab some stuff, grab yourself some bargains okay um but you can see there's a stack of stuff in there so i'm going to stop share there for the moment and i will actually show you what it looks like um in the um the resource itself now i i specifically and intentionally put a few things together that i use myself okay and it sort of was developed from something I started last year with my um, year nine and 10 students. And I liked how it worked, but I, there was a few things I wasn't quite happy with. Um, and COVID sort of got in the way of a lot of things because we had to do a lot of online learning and that changed again, my approach to how I was doing things. Um, you know, but it, but it is what it is, isn't it? So I'll share screen again. So here's the thing. Now, when you get this particular one, I'll just go bigger and I want to go to this one first. Now, the thing is, when you get the tone color one, you're actually getting those, um, uh, what do you call them, the, the 50 instrument cards for nothing. I'm, I'm throwing those in there because, again, it's something I actually need and want to use with my kids. So, yeah. So um, I'll go a little bit bigger. So there's, um, you can see concepts of music. Okay. There's the actual, um, what do you call it? I want to say ingredients. That's not where, all right. <laughs> contents that you can see in there now all of these products when i get them done as so i've only done three so far um but when i get the other concepts done they'll all be following this same sort of um format okay so you can see if i just do that so you got concepts of music the actual intro to the concepts of music because i never know where someone's starting I, I said i'm starting with tone color this year i didn't start with tone color last year i think i started with duration but i want to change things up okay so i've got some printables my music scaffold, which we'll be talking about, and I'll be showing you and giving you a demo on that tonight. Um, that's some stuff for the kids to be thing. And this is what we're actually going to be using. I'm going to be showing you how I came up with this and what this actually means tonight. So this is a perfect accompaniment to this actual, um, uh, what's actually in this book. I'm literally doing that tonight with you. And you can see here the YouTube demonstration. So that links to my channel. And the thing is, what I've done is deliberately given you bigger versions that you can print out for your kids if you want to. Templates, there's suggested links. So if I actually click on those, you'll go to different songs, which is fantastic. And um, that is something I use with my senior students. But that ties in with this, which I know is sideways there. However, it is the concepts of music. Um, what do you call them? mind maps that I love so much and now I can't find my mind map oh well it's here somewhere I did have it on top but anyway you can obviously if you want to have a look at that the other way so um but it comes out so that's again printable ones if you really want they're perfect 
for printing out poster size. Okay, double, like this is A4, but if you enlarge it to A3, it does that beautifully. Great for around the classroom, which I know I will be doing when I get to class. Okay, and there, those are perfect for the kids to actually use and to write into. Um, and so many different ways, you know, I love those things. And then obviously there are term cards, sorry, all the terms. Um, this is a, a, a fantastic list I use with all my kids, even my seniors. I give them this list of kid, um, words to help them describe uh, different sounds and then I've also given you the term cards now again you know I love a good old term card so here they are printed and I've literally got another five sets here I've got to actually go and do um, laminate so I'll be ready for class when I get back there myself so all the term cards now this is the thing that I really like and it, again this is what's sort of been developed so what I had last year was this one listening question two so these ones were the questions I was giving my kids now the problem is I've got some kids in my class and I'm sure you will have two and this is why I've given you two levels where some students really struggle to actually do these questions this is actually just a bit too hard for them so that's why level one or tone color listening questions one and you get two versions a couple of versions especially because of ways you can um what do you call it um classify instruments okay but sometimes it's just if you just they just need something a little bit simpler and that's what this is okay so these listening question ones um, are for um, that kids who might not have maybe need a little bit more support a little bit of differentiation okay and um, this one is exactly the same as that one it's just got a space for them to write but I don't normally give them a printed copy I literally actually give them a, um, a printed copy as a laminate and um, get them to work from that and write into their books that's how I do it and then I've also given you so you can see here I didn't go crazy this one's got like your idiophone cordophone etc classification this one though is string family brass woodwind electronic sounds percussion because you know sometimes those it you know depending on the type of ensemble you're doing then as I said there's comparison so we will always have to do a comparison let's face it and again two lots depending on the types of instruments you want to use and then obviously level two or questions two same sort of thing um it's just a little bit hard i'm just asking a little bit more information from the kids okay and there's i know i've got kids who can handle this really easily and really well and there's other kids that can't and again they've got two different versions because you can see here this one's got like the string family and this has got like idiophone cordophone etc okay now then i've given you some music templates and there's a train going past also giving you a second um, different sample so this is what I was using last year but again it was just a bit actually for some kids it was just too much so that's why I've given you another sample in this book so this is for your kids who are at that next that good level and that's broken up into the music paragraph main idea understanding sample information and connect to concept okay and obviously then oh that's the other thing lots of bonuses so there's like different ways you can actually learn the terminology because if the kids know the terms they actually can do all the other parts that's the main thing and obviously some other pages there for you so here's the thing I know I needed this myself okay and I, this is why I've actually written this and put it together because I need it <laughs> and I know that if I need it hopefully you need it too so um what I personally will be doing is see the thing is I can differentiate so that's like you know I could give that to some kids and they'd be able to cope with that and be able to um, answer a question just for that other kids are going to need the actual um what do you call it the actual questions other kids will be able to be fine if I give them just these sort of little paragraphs which is, that's exactly the same information okay it's just one's colored one's not and others will be able to cope more with the harder one okay so again it's just because depends on what your kids need but one thing they all love no matter who they are is to have these term cards in their hands okay um what i'll, I'll probably give you a couple of lesson ideas um 
next week, maybe, um, I think I will, uh, of how you can actually use these term cards along with the instrument cards when you're listening to pieces of music and doing that identification of instruments and then techniques. There's lots of things you can do with this. And that's why I like it because it's not always just writing stuff down. That helps, but it's also good to get some stuff in their hands. So I'm going to show you, as I said, um, the paragraph. And um, honestly, I can't remember what the song was that I chose. I will have a look. I said, I will share screen again. And I said, we will go through and I'll show you a demonstration of the writing about um, music, which is in the actual book. All right, so let me just go there and from beginning. So as I said, we're writing about music, about tone color. So um, the kids, tone color to me, you know, like is, encompasses everything. So that's where I use Ice Doctor, which is that little one. Identify, classify, explain, describe, range, roll, register. That's it. And um, you should get kids to do that in table form. But sometimes we, you know, if you're anything like me, my school, big literacy push all the time. So that's why I do these things. So we're going to be talking about um, writing about music. Plus the kids need to be able to do this in senior school anyway. So um, actually, I'm not going to do the concepts of music, but I will be talking about um, Umbrella. Oh, that's right. The baseball's version of Umbrella. I forgot about that one. Oh, I did have it. Sorry, I didn't think I did. But time, the concept, six concepts of music as opposed to the eight elements of music are duration, dynamics and expressive techniques, pitch, structure, texture and tone colour. And as I said, we are talking about tone colour tonight, which I always think of as green. Don't ask me why and why did that do that? So tone colour simply means the unique sound quality created by an instrument or the instruments heard in a piece of music. So some people call, talk about timbre and that's just how an instrument sounds. But for me, tone colour is more about identifying the instrument, classifying the instrument into what family it belongs to, explaining how that sound is made, and all those things contribute to how it sounds and the sound quality and the sound, the unique sound it has in the piece of music, because, you know, there's lots of different ways that an instrument can be played. So you can see here, like these are um, three different little um, quarterphones. Okay. But each one of those is going to have a very different sound because of the shape of the instrument, because of the strings, because of the way it's played, all those sorts of things. Now, timbre, on the other hand, is just referring to, in my opinion, the unique sound quality of an instrument. So again, this is a balafon, okay, an African type of xylophone. It would have a very similar sound to um, uh, like an orchestral marimba or xylophone, a little bit different, especially because their tuning is not necessarily tuned to notes that we use, okay. Um, they have their own unique tuning, especially if it's a more traditional instrument. Similar sounds, slightly different, but again, it's unique sound quality. And the difference is, you know, the way this one sounds different, even though it's very similar to a xylophone, is obviously because of the gourds underneath and the fact that it would be hit, being hit by a different type of arm um, instead of a nice, maybe soft mallet. Okay, it might be something different, okay, that they're using to actually make a sound on the instrument. And then performing media, which is all the same sort of thing, Again, are the instruments used in the piece of music? So I always think of tone color as being a combination of performing media and timbre. So it's what instruments are playing and how do they sound? And how they sound depends on how they've actually been, what um, techniques they're using to actually make a sound. So let's look at the mind maps. So again, remember, you've got the mind maps and you can get the, um, there's a free elements of music mind maps. If you want those, you can go to my website or if you go to juliajulia.com forward slash free mind maps or smoosh together, you'll be able to put your information in and get yourself a set of the free mind maps, which is the elements of music, but they cross over a lot. Okay. But for me, as I said, for tone color, these are the things I look for. So identify, classify, explain, describe, range, roll, register. So what I ask my kids to remember is ICE Doctor, I-C-E-D-R. And I know there's a few R's. And honestly, sometimes they can't do all the R's, but the thing I would really always want them to focus on is at least what is the role of the instrument in the ensemble, in the music that you're listening to. And then also you've got to think about how you're going to classify them. So there's lots of different ways to do them. There's obviously your instrument families, and I know I've put the voices here, but we've got voices, percussion, family, string, family, brass, family, woodwind family, which is all mainly your orchestral type of instruments, again, including the voices though. And again, if you want to look at it 
a different way, you could use this one, the Hornbostel um, sax um, classification. I never know if I say that right, sorry. But your yeah, um, idiophones, cordophones, aerophones, membranophones, electrophone or electronic sounds. I prefer to use electronic sounds, but you can use the word electrophone. And again, it's just different one. And honestly, this is just the tip of an iceberg if you are actually using this system. They have that many different subsets and subcategories of each of these. It's um, mind blowing to actually go and have a look at what they <laughs> got in there it's um quite complicated but just to keep it simple for the kids this is what we need to be doing so i chose to um analyze the baseballs now if you haven't heard of them there are um they're a, a band that does everything rockabilly style okay so this is the song umbrella which is the rihanna yeah rihanna rihanna sorry um it's her song baseball's style which is um, a great version of 1950 style it's a really good one to do a comparison on actually as well but one of the reasons I like using this one is because you can actually see the instruments actually, that they're playing and performing on and it makes it much easier for the kids to actually um, see and it's a, especially when you're doing tone color at first it's good for them to actually see what they're hearing so they can make that connection with what they're sounding hearing so what we were just looking at for this particular one is just looking at what instruments are playing and how are they classified? Okay, I wasn't even worried about necessarily explaining the sound they're making or how does it sound or what techniques they're doing. I don't think, but that, that's, those sorts of things can come in there as well. So you can see in this particular piece, I've got voices down the bottom. There were two male tenor lead and then male backing vocals. So there's actually three vocalists, but from what I can tell in this particular song, there was only two that were actually being um, in the section I was listening to that were actually being the lead and the, then they all sing together. Um, there's two electric guitars, there's the, now as electrophones, idiophones, cymbals on the drum kit. Now this is where kids get a bit um, confused. Um, I like to say that there's, you know, there's two parts to the drum kit, obviously, because there's the cymbals and then also the, um, the drum kit, which is the actual membranophone part, because if it was in an orchestra, there would be. Okay, it'd be two different parts to like, there'd be two different people playing different things. One would person be playing the actual um, big cymbals. Okay, and someone else might be playing a snare drum or a bass drum or whatever else. We've also got a quarterphone as a double bass and there aren't any aerophones in this particular piece of music. So to get this show on the road, we're gonna use the um, framework, which I use all the time, as you know, which is music, main musical idea, understanding of that idea, specific samples, in-depth information, and then connect it to the concept or the element of music. So when we break it down, and I said, you can use the mind map. Um, and the only reason I haven't put it back on here is it wasn't going to fit nicely. So these are just the information on the side there. You can see where it's got voices, two lead male vocals, a vocalist and a male backing vocalist, quarterphones, membranophones, electronic sounds, aerophones, and idiophones. So to put this in um, uh, an actual paragraph, okay, what we need to do is we need to ask the kids the question, all right, what is the main idea? So the main idea is tone color. What does that mean? So tone color refers to, and that's usually what I actually start with with this first sentence. And then I introduce the, um, the song being used. And now the thing is with this particular one, it's, um, you know, you could talk about the type of ensemble. So if it was an orchestra, you could talk about the fact that the um, the orchestra and the instruments heard in, in the piece, um, it's from an orchestra or a chamber orchestra or a string quartet or a quintet or a jazz quintet, whatever it happens to be, you can obviously add that in there. And then literally the next part of the, um, the scaffold, the sample and in-depth information is talking about the specific samples and in this case, voices, idiophones, chordophones, aerophones, membrane phones, electronic sounds, okay, and then classifying them, which is your in-depth information, okay. And then the last part is the classification, um, so is connecting that to a concept or to an element. Now, I hate this every time I put that, turn that off, and it still comes through. Okay, so your paragraph could sound something like this. Tone colour in music refers to the instruments used in a piece of music and how they are classified. In the song Umbrella, performed by the baseballs, the instruments used in the music are typical of an early rock ensemble or rock band. Okay, The instruments heard in the music are two lead male tenor vocalists, male backing vocalists, drum kit, double bass and two electric guitars. Now, honestly, some kids might leave it at that and that's 
that's okay. They've told me what, if they could tell me it was tone color and the instruments in there, they've given me something, but we want to push them a little bit further and give a little bit extra information. And this is where this next part comes in. So the instruments can be classified into several different categories because that's what we're talking about in this particular paragraph. All the voices heard in the music are male and tenor. The drum kit has two main parts, the cymbals and the drums. The cymbals are idiophones. This means they are hit to make a sound. The drums are membranophones because they have a skin or membrane that is hit to make a sound. So again, that sample, that in-depth information. The two electric guitars are electric sounds because they require electricity to amplify the sound. The double bass is a quarterphone because it has strings on it that are plucked to make a sound especially in this particular piece. The classification and combination of instruments heard in this song make it an example of early rock ensemble because this style of music did not use a bass guitar as it was not a common instrument at this time. Now, this is the sorts of things like that connector concept is actually quite hard to get out of kids and especially for tone color. But, you know, why is the, why are these instruments an example of, um, you could just ask them why are these, these instruments and the way they're put together, why is that an example of, an early rock music or rockabilly sound. Okay, why is that? Why does it sound rockabilly as opposed to hard rock or heavy metal or grunge or whatever it happens to be? Why? And you know, and that's where the ensemble and the instruments used and all that sort of stuff, besides all the the other parts, we're you know, rhythmically and melodically and all that. I'm not getting into that. We're just talking about tone color today. So let's just have a look at this with it broken down into the music parts. Okay. So again, it's exactly what's on the previous page, but we've just got the different colors. So remember that the pink is your main idea. The orange is your understanding of the main idea. Red is your specific samples. Green is the in-depth information. So it's explaining the samples. And then the purple is your connector concept or connector element, okay, or connect to your main idea. That is where that comes to. So again, so I'll just read through it. So tone, color, and music refers main idea. The understanding to the instruments used in a piece of music and how they are classified. In the song Umbrella performed by the baseballs, the instruments used in the music are typical of an early rock ensemble. So again, that's showing that understanding. That could even be a bit of main idea, really, but it's showing that understanding of what tone colour is in this particular song. So the next part is your sample. The instruments heard in the music are two lead male tenor vocalists, male backing vocalists, drum kit, double bass, and two electric guitars. So again, as I said before, most kids would probably leave it there. We just want to push them a bit. So again, that's just samples. That's just telling us what instruments are there. That's just listing what was in that table. Nothing else, okay? The next part is where we actually get into that classification where we want to actually get the kids to go a little bit further and a little bit deeper with the information. The instruments can be classified into several different categories. So it's a specific sample. All the voices heard in the music, so that's a sample, all right? Sorry, so that green was the in-depth information, a male antenna. So all the voices, that's just sample. Information about that sample is our male antenna. The drum kit has two main parts, the cymbals and the drums. Okay, again, a specific sample. The cymbals are idiophones. So there's that classification and in-depth information. This means that they are hit to make a sound. Now, again, most kids would stop at that. The cymbals are idiophones and they wouldn't push it further to go, this means that they are hit to make a sound. That's what we really want them to do. What makes an idiophone an idiophone, okay? The drums are membranophones because, and again, they would often stop at membranophones, but let's push it a bit further because they have a skin or membrane that is hit to make a sound, okay? So, you know, a banjo also has a membranophone, a membrane on it. Well, some of them do, some of them would, but, um, but you don't hit the banjo, the skin to make the sound. You play, pluck the strings or play the strings, strum the strings, okay? This is where we're talking about that, pushing that, pushing the information a bit more. Two electric guitars, again, specific sample, are electric sounds, the in-depth information, because they require electricity to amplify the sound. The double bass is a quarterphone, again, a specific sample, because it has strings on it that are plucked to make a sound, okay? And that what, that's what makes it a quarterphone. And again, that last part there in the purple is your connector concept or um, element. The classification and combination of instruments heard in this song make it an example of early rock on, of an early rock ensemble because this style of music did not use a bass guitar as it was not a common instrument at the time. So this band, to make it particular to the style, 
is using a double bass as opposed to using a bass guitar. Okay, and that's what gives it that other um, more authentic um, early rock sound. Okay, um, you know, as opposed to when the bass guitar was came in, um, Buddy Holly time. We're talking music a bit earlier. They used a double bass, so you can see there. Like again, if I was to pull this apart even more, and if I just talked about what's in the red, that would be again what some kids would actually just tell me. But that green is where we're pushing that information, pushing the envelope, and getting them to actually give us a bit more information to give them the higher marks. Okay, because again, you know, they could tell me the instruments. And they could tell me the name of the song and they could list the instruments. That's probably about it. That's where some kids will stop. But to push it a bit further, we want them to actually tell us a bit more information. And that's what I like about this scaffold. It works. <laughs> so if you'd like to know more information about how to write about music, check out my Writing About Music course on Teachable at juliagia.teachable.com. Now, that's only going to open for a little bit. I'm going to be closing it for a little bit soon, and then I'll be actually doing a launch and reopening again for a short period of time. You can always find plenty of music classroom resources ready for you to use today over at my Teachers Pay Teacher Store. Don't forget to use the link in the description below, which is linked to that particular product, that tone colour one that I was talking about earlier, which is where that actual paragraph is an example of in that resource. And don't forget if you would also like a free copy of the Elements of Music Mind Maps, which you could use um, as well, even though I was talking about tone colour, which is a concept, Elements of Music is they're still all in there. Okay. You can use that link there, juliajulia.com forward slash free mind maps. Okay. And don't forget, you can always go to my blog for lots more information. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, okay, I've got links all below as well, which has all the information um, for you. And again, this is meant to be a resource for um, people. So let me just stop my share because I've finished my screen. Okay. So again, I thank you for being here. Um, and so we're talking tone color this month. I think I'll do one more on tone colour and I might move on to something else a week after that. Um, I'm hoping I'm back at work next week because I know I'm COVID free. I don't have symptoms. <laughs> I'm really hoping. Okay. But um, I'll talk about that in a moment. So until next time, I'm Julia from Julia Teaching Resources and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>